Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 4b, when we're going to talk about what are the genes that are on the sex chromosomes. Basically, say that the X chromosome is very much like an autosome in the kinds of genes that it has and their density. It has about 2,000 genes and they have no special role in sexual development. In contrast, the Y chromosome is, has very few genes and these genes are genes that function only in males. However, these aren't the genes that are primarily responsible for the main aspects of male phenotype. Those are autosomal genes which are regulated by SRY, the Y-specific determinant of maleness. So here are schematic drawings of the X and Y chromosome. These are the kind of drawings, remember, that are called ideograms, and the bands that you see, the black and white bands, don't represent genes, they just represent regions of the chromosome that stain slightly differently with particular dyes that cytogeneticists use to distinguish different chromosomes. So the X chromosome is quite large. It is about 155 million base pairs long, and it has about 2,000 genes. It has its fair share of the 20,000 or so genes that are in our genome. These genes are responsible for lots of functions in the body, including important functions in blood clotting, in red-green color vision, in muscle function. We particularly know about the genes that are on the X chromosome because, for reasons that we'll explain later, um, phenotypes caused by defects in these genes are very common in males. Now, the Y chromosome is about it's about 38% the length of the X chromosome, but it doesn't have 38% of the genes. It has only a couple of dozen genes. Um, these genes are expressed only in males, but they don't code for particularly important male functions. For, um, to give you a sense of the relative sizes, here are the X and Y chromosomes drawn to scale with the rest of the chromosomes in the human complement, the autosomes. The X chromosome is about the same size as chromosome 7. The Y chromosome is about the same size as chromosome 19. So they're within the range of normal human chromosomes. Now, on the X chromosome, as I said, there are 2,000 genes. Um, a few of them are listed here, and probably the most dramatic thing you'll notice is that none of these words make any sense. These are genes are named to reflect various um, cell biological or other um, functions, and they're abbreviations that aren't at all helpful to some people like us. But these, all of these little colored dots here represent genes on the X chromosome. Now, I could have let, this could be a diagram of any of the autosomes. The gene density is very similar across all the autosomes and the X chromosome. Most of these gene functions have nothing to do with male or female sexual development. Um, the genes on the X chromosome, like the genes on the autosome, are mostly for functions that are shared between males and females. X chromosomes also are inherited like autosomes, and we'll talk more about this in Module 7. X chromosomes, however, differ from autosomes in how the genes are expressed, and we'll talk about this in the next two lectures, Lecture 4C and 4D. Now, here's all the genes known on the Y chromosome. We could only show a very small subset of the genes on the X chromosome, but this is all the genes known on the Y chromosome. Only a couple of dozen genes. These genes are expressed in males because only males have this chromosome. That's kind of a backwards way to put it. Really, if you have this chromosome, you develop as a male. So that, of course, any genes that are expressed from this chromosome are going to function only in males, because the chromosome makes you be a male. Um, you might think that the 
genes that are responsible for the development of male tissues, the genes that respond to the transcription factor function of SRY, or genes on the Y chromosome. But in fact, that's not the case. SRY produces the male-specific transcription factor, the SRY protein, but the SRY protein doesn't direct the transcription of other genes on the Y chromosome. Instead, the SRY protein, that transcription factor, activates transcription of male-specific genes, of male-specific genes that are on many different autosomes and even the X chromosome. These genes are not particularly found on the Y chromosome. That's actually a good thing. Most of the genes on the Y chromosome are starting to degenerate. Most of the sequences on the Y chromosome that aren't genes are remnants of ancestral sequences that way back in um, vertebrate evolution were functional genes. But they've degenerated because of the way that the Y chromosome is inherited. So what we've done, we've talked about the X chromosome's genes. It has many genes with general functions in males and females, has the gene density and g type of gene functions that you would expect to see also on an autosome. But the Y chromosome is very different. Although it's a you know, moderate-sized chromosome, it has very few genes. One gene, SRY, is the cause of male development, but SRY causes male development not by activating male-specific genes on the Y chromosome, but by activating male-specific genes on the autosomes and the X chromosome. And we'll talk more especially about the inheritance of the X and Y chromosomes in modules 7 and 8. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk about the problem of the different dosages of X chromosome genes in males and females. I hope to see you there.